to start with it, I have invited Mr. Rocket Scientist himself, <laughs> TJ Hong. Thank Welcome. you for inviting me here. All right. <laughs> so, let's get right into it. Who are you and what have been what have you been doing with your life? Um, hi guys, I'm, I'm TJ. Um, I'm a student from Purdue University. Um, I'm currently majoring in aeronautics and astronautics engineering. Um, this is basically the field um, you can build rockets and airplanes. Uh, also, during the last five months, I have performed an internship at a, at a rocket um, company startup. Wow. And that exists in Korea because we Koreans too build rockets. Yes, uh, for sure. Um, so our attempt to build uh, real rockets, uh, the meaning of real rockets is actually um, rockets that use liquid propellants, <laughs> not solid propellants, because solids are way easier to make. Um, okay. But anyway, um, it started around like 1980. Um, we built KSO, right. um, which is abbreviation of Korean sounding rocket. The Korean rocket scientists, they have built KSLV-1, uh, which is the NARO. And last year, NURI, um, the right. first Korean-made um, space launch vehicle so far. Wow. So when did this passion, when did this fascination towards building rockets began for you? Also, my passion in this field for making rockets started while I was writing the college application. So originally, I wanted to pursue my passion in the field of paleontology. Once I had a chance to visit Texas to meet my friends, um, there, as you know, in Texas, there's a Houston, and in Houston, there's Johnson Space <laughs> Center. So in Houston's Johnson Space Center is actually a place where the, all the um, training um, programs for the astronauts are, are being performed right. uh, before the astronauts actually go up into space. Uh, also, at the Johnson Space Center, you can see the actual rockets that were used during the Apollo program. Um, the Apollo program um, is also known as the moon program. They try to send people to the moon from Earth. Um, there's a rocket named Saturn V. Right. Um, it's really a building-sized rocket, and its size is uh, roughly about more than 100 meters tall, wow. um, which is like about um, like 40-story building. Right, right, um, right. It's really massive and magnificent, I would like to say. Um, so watching those all the rockets that were actually used during the Apollo program, and watching all the videos of a walk and runs, <laughs> I was so inspired in right, the field yeah. of aerospace engineering. I remember you as a student who's interested in paleontology, mm -hmm. um, because back when you were studying for TOEFL, yeah. you always got the dinosaur yes. and fossil questions uh -huh. all, co all correct yeah. all the time. <laughs> and then you are now doing rockets. And I think one similarity is they're both about um, mysteries. One is about the past and what it, one is about mysteries unknown. Mm -hmm. really. So why space? Why should we go to space? And why should we try to build rockets to get there? Space itself inspires people. Like, you know, back in like, uh, like hundreds of years ago, like people were so eager to find a new continent. Right, right. For instance, like in 1492, Columbus, he discovers the new world. The, the, right? the new world, yeah. Right. So just like that, I think, Space is mi mystery. Um, it's filled with some unknown stuff. It's really dangerous out there. Right, right, right. But mankind is so deep and so serious about curiosity. In that aspect, I think it's our nature that we are being um, attracted by unknown or undiscovered field. Right. So right. I think space itself also has potential new sources or materials that are hard to get in Earth. Um, for that reason, I think space is really important and special. Let's talk about rockets a little bit. Let's get to know about it. So first of all, what are some of the challenges in building rockets? The first one I'd like to say is that the rocket itself is nature. Because um, rocket is the only way that you can escape from Earth. Okay. Even an airplane, I mean, they can go up, like really high up there, but they cannot escape from the gravity of Earth. It's really incredibly hard to 
make it successful. Is it because of the the material and the weight, or is it because of the speed? Actually, it's both okay. the material, speed, and the mechanism itself. How fast is it? The rocket itself yeah. is actually it depends on the altitude of the rocket, but usually it's faster than sound, faster than sound speed of sound. So we're talking about like Mach. Yeah, Mach, like a Mach three or four. Wow, that's really fast. Yeah. All right, and and we're talking about not like a jet plane、mm -hmm. in Top Gun. We're talking、mm -hmm. about huge ten-story building. Yes. Moving at the speed of sound,、mm -hmm. right? Double、yeah. or triple the sound,、yeah. the speed of sound. So that's that's actually huge.、Mm -hmm. um, and there's another question that I've always wondered about. I've always thought that maybe sending the rocket to space might be the easy one. Because once we put human in there,、mm -hmm. what we have to consider is bring those human back to Earth. Yeah. So I can imagine having a huge engine or、mm -hmm. huge fuel、uh, chambers to shoot the rocket up.、Mm -hmm. But if there's a huge barrier and all kinds of difficulties, challenges that makes a rocket go up difficult, there must be the same level of barriers. For the rocket to come back in, how do we bring them back? It's actually quite—I don't want to say easy, but relatively easier than sending like a、ah, okay. from the surface、okay. to the orbit. Okay. Because in orbit, you already have the inertia,、right. uh, which is like momentum,、um, acceleration. I'd like to say. So sending、uh, is harder. Sending is harder actually, because、ah. you have three stages. Usually, rockets are built、um, composed of. Two or three stages.、Right. There are no like single stage rocket actually. So regarding like the, I mean, look at the structure itself. It's more complicated. You have to deal with the three stages of rocket、uh, rather than dealing with one. Even though it's coming from orbit to Earth, and you have still have to deal with the、um, like the temperatures when you're right, right, re-entering、right. to the Earth's atmosphere because there's like a temperature being produced from the fracture. Between the surface of the module, which is the like a module where the astronauts are actually in,、right. and the atmosphere of the Earth, but it's way still compared to the sending people to the orbit, it's easier. But we're not just dropping. <laughs> we're not just dropping it, right? I mean, there's no oxygen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Good. 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 All right. Well, so still building a, a rocket is a massive. Task,、mm -hmm. right? Yes. Is there a part that you might call a dream job? Um, I really wanna someday wanna be at a position. Um, it's called test engineer,、uh, where you can perform the tests like combustion test or combustion test for the spark spark igniter someday because it's the hardest part of the rocket engine. These things can't be gamble. Right,、mm -hmm. it's there's a there's a billions of dollars at stake,、mm -hmm. and each test alone will also cost、mm -hmm. billions of dollars.、Uh -huh. So, how do you know that you know? Because you can't learn, you can't do these things by trial and error. And of course, there must、um, be some level of hunches. Yeah, but you need to know. There needs to be objectively, scientifically、mm -hmm. provable way. That you know what、mm -hmm. is right is what is right. So how do you know when you're right, or how do you know you're even ready?、Um, there's no like a perfect thing in rocket science.、Okay. When I was doing my internship at a rocket like a company during the last five months,、um, we thought like all the parameters or the data or like the data we've already gained before the actual combustion test,、right. like the experiments,、um, we thought those data were successful. But on the like the D day of the combustion test, it didn't work, and the engine actually exploded.、Um, so we don't really know. We just keep like、um, performing like experiments and experiments, trial trial,、um, until we just make it successful. Our last question、mm -hmm. is going to be this: You found your life passion, yeah. And even at age eighteen,、mm -hmm. that's still quite young. Yes.、Yeah, What has changed since you realized your life passion? I just. Started to like singing things、um, that are only related to my field. Actually, <laughs> like for instance, look at the like、um, where I was like like a 
when I was trying to cook, I see the gas burner, I see the oil sparking lighter. <laughs> hey, well, it has been an inspiring time. I have learned a great deal about how to look at rockets differently and, and, and the work that people at NASA do. It's really a life-giving and life-dedicating work that they're doing, and it's mm -hmm. quite admirable, and it's amazing to know. So, thank, thank you. you.